Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Cotton Grower Magazine's Cotton Companion Podcast. This is Jim Stedman, editor of Cotton Grower, and I'm flying solo again today while my colleague and good friend Beck Barnes handles some other business. And that's fine, because we generally look at this episode as the end of the cotton meeting season. We just closed out at the Mid-South Farm and Gin Show in Memphis a few days ago with plenty of conversation about heading to the field with a number of increasingly impatient growers. And with temperatures warming up across the cotton belt, we can certainly understand those feelings. Now, the Farm and Gin Show is also the site for the presentation of our Cotton Grower Cotton Achievement Award during a special luncheon honoring our 2023 recipient, Bart Davis of Doran, Georgia. We were pleased to have Bart and most of his family there, as well as representatives from numerous industry organizations like the Cotton Board, Georgia Cotton Commission, National Cotton Council, and Southern Cotton Growers, plus some of Bart's good friends. It's a great day. We're going to share that award presentation and Bart's remarks with you in just a few minutes. But first, our sponsor partner, the American Cotton Shippers Association, has a brief message they'd like to share. The American Cotton Shippers Association, also known as AXA, is a trade association primarily made up of cotton merchants founded in 1924. AXA members manage the majority of the world's cotton trade, providing services of merchandising, delivery logistics, and risk management to their customers. AXA is proud to be celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Join them in Scottsdale, Arizona in June 2024 for their centennial celebration event. As always, thanks to our friends at AXA for that message and for their support. Now, before we turn our focus to Bart Davis and the Cotton Achievement Award presentation, I wanted to share a bit of industry news that may be of interest to growers as cotton is getting ready to go in the ground this year especially in light of the recent dicamba issues and rulings. AMVAC has announced that Zalo herbicide, that's Z-A-L-O, which is enabled by ProLease technology, has received federal registration for early to mid-post emergence use in cotton, soybean, and canola that's tolerant to glufosinate. The important part, this will be available for this growing season following state registrations. Azalo is a premix of glufosinate, which is the active ingredient in Liberty, and quizalifop, which is the active ingredient in Assure 2. That gives you strong control of broadleaf weeds and broad spectrum control of annual and perennial grasses. Now, according to the company, Zalo is enabled by ProLease technology, which is a process developed by AMVAC that protects the herbicide molecules from performance inhibitors allowing them to reach the target weed where the molecules are released for enhanced activity. This technology also helps overcome degradation, separation, and compatibility or mixing issues in the container and in the sprayer. Now, this product should fit into weed management programs for growers who are looking for an alternative treatment with an auxin herbicide on both enlist or extend flex crops for resistance management and for growers who are needing broad-spectrum, broadleaf, and grass weed control beyond the mandated dicamba cutoff dates. To learn more about Zalo, you can visit zaloherbicide.com. That's Z-A-L-O-H-E-R-B-I-C-I-D-E.com. Or go to cottongrower.com for more details as well. And now it's awards time. as so we share the presentation of the 2023 Cotton Grower Cotton Achievement Award to Bart Davis. But anyway, now the reason we're all here today. Looking back, each recipient of the Cotton Grower Cotton Achievement Award brings his and her, because we have had one female winner, uh, bring their own qualifications to the award. All are excellent cotton farmers, highly regarded industry leaders. Others include researchers and outside the box visionaries who challenge long established thinking and production practices help make cotton production all the more efficient today. Then there are those who always ask why. Those who are perpetually looking for answers and solutions for questions and other things that he sees in his fields, in his industry, and in his community. That's Bart Davis. 
Bart grew up on the family farm in Dover, Georgia. And he'll tell you that farming is all he ever wanted to do. But I'm pretty sure that having to come to become the primary decision maker for the farm at age 18 was not exactly what he had in mind. The fact that in his 43 years of farming, he's built Davis Family Farms into one of the most successful family farming operations in South Georgia. That's a true testament to your drive, perseverance, and yes, asking why over and over again. Like most good industry cotton, cotton industry leaders, he'll tell you he was a bit hesitant to get involved at first. After all, he's first and foremost a farmer, and farmers don't like leaving the farm. But he did get involved, first with Georgia Cotton Commission, then with Southern Cotton Growers and Cotton Incorporated, then came with Georgia well, Weevil Eradication Foundation, uh, some time with the National Cotton Council. He's held leadership positions with each group, proving once again that you don't always find leadership leadership finds you. He's an innovator. He's a perpetual thinker, as Jason said. He's always looking for ways to improve efficiencies across the farm, help protect the environment, and make every acre more productive. He has and continues to work with the University of Georgia on multiple studies relating to precision ag practices, variable rate planting, nematode studies, and now trying to figure out the best uses for drones on the farm. He's as much a valuable resource for the university as they are for him. Bart, I wanted to share a couple of comments from some people that you know, you know them well, and they really wanted to be here today. So I just wanted you to, to recognize that. First, Philip Roberts, professor and extension entomologist at the University of Georgia. Said Bart Davis is an avid supporter of Extension and frequently cooperates with Extension conducting on-the-farm research and educational programs. This allows him to see new technologies and practices on Davis family farms, but also generates data used in Extension programming across Georgia and the region. Bart Davis is a good man, one who treats people with respect. He loves cotton and constantly strives to increase the bottom line on his farm. He is committed to cotton and selflessly serves the cotton industry in so many ways. And from Stanley Klopek, who does not offer praise very often. Bart is one of two farmers participating as a member of Georgia's Endangered Species Pilot Act program. He was critical in the, in the development of the team and its objective to increase the quantity and quality of information available to the US EPA and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service so they can make better and better decisions. He's hosted EPA and Fish and Wildlife officials at his farm to help everyone better understand the farming community. Over the past five years, he's participated in approximately 20 research studies, working with numerous extension agents and specialists. Having a farmer like Bart willing to provide a real-world location to conduct applied research experiments is priceless. That's high praise, Bart. Yet for all the successes and recognitions coming with Bart's way, he still credits his family for their continued support and involvement in Davis Family Farm. His wife Paula, his son Trey who could not be with us today, his son Jed, wife Natalie, and also kids, Emma, Brady, and Eliza, the next generation. Daughter Lakin, her husband Taylor, we're fortunate to have you all with us here today, and, and we're honored that you, uh, you took time to join us. So when I visited with Bart late last year, one thing he said, and I think Jason's already mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. He said, truly, I think, really, truly exemplifies his farm and his life philosophies, and that's, I always feel like if I'm not changing, I'm not getting anywhere. Bart, I think you're doing just fine from that perspective. Over the past few years, he's been recognized as the Quail Forever Precision Ag Farmer of the Year for 2021. Moultrie Colquitt, Colquitt County Chamber of Commerce Agribusinessman of the Year for 2022. And was the 2023 Georgia Farmer of the Year. And now, it's our pleasure to add one more honor for Bart Davis, the Cotton Grower Cotton Achievement Award for 2023. Bart, you join me?
it's an honor to get this award. I've never been one really to like recognition or, or get awards. I'm near likely to be getting the right record. Um, <laughs> Jim called me and, uh, that day back in fall told me. Then Taylor called and said, Has anybody called you? I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, Yeah. I said, This has got to stop. <laughs> get to me. Anyway, <clears throat> it's an honor to get this award. But I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the guy sitting at a table right here. And my parents. I was blessed to be able to be raised in the country and on the farm. And that's what, what I always wanted to do. You know, my wife fussed at me sometimes. But she's never fussed at me if I can want to a cotton me. <laughs> And I've been to a lot of them over the last few years. But anyway, it's an honor and to get to be involved in all the cotton organizations. We have, we have a lot of really good organizations. The Cotton Commission, Southern Cotton Growers, the Cotton Council. And I've met a lot of really good people and good friends that I enjoy with that round. And all. <clears throat> it's real important. We talk about this a lot, for people to be involved. I used to want to be involved, that one was part of it. And Louis Perry is one of the main reasons I'm standing up here today, because uh, he just kept wording the piss out of me until I finally got it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important. It's hard to find these people to do it and to go and show up to me. We have to keep looking. Because all this stuff we do is very important for our livelihoods and our industry. And um, it's getting harder and harder to find people. And um, one statement I'd like to make, we just all got, we just all been, always been important. We got to come together and work closer to save our rural communities and our family farms. As y'all know, the EPA, I mean, it's something coming at us from every direction, every day. And... That's one thing I want to bring up. Just, just keep all the organizations keep looking for good people. We got to have them, and it's hard to leave. I mean, I hope Jed and Trey and Taylor and Lincoln one day, when they don't have to stay home and work, so I can maybe they can get involved. But you know, <clears throat> it, it is an honor, and I appreciate it. I appreciate all y'all being my friends. Thank you. For more details about BART and the Cotton Grower Cotton Achievement Award, you can check out the cover story, which was in our January issue of Cotton Grower. You can visit cottongrower.com or keep your eyes out for a special insert that's coming in our April issue. And that's it for this episode of the Cotton Companion Podcast, short and sweet. Thanks to the American Cotton Shippers Association for their participation and sponsorship with the Cotton Companion. And as always, thanks to you, dear listeners, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you like what you heard, please be sure to spread the word and tell your friends about the Cotton Companion podcast. Here's where and how they can find us. You can find the Cotton Companion in three easy ways. First, go to cottongrower.com forward slash companion, or simply click the podcast tab at the top of the homepage. Second, subscribe to our channel on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts these days. And three, sign up for our weekly e-newsletter, The Cotton Grower E-News, that's delivered to your email inbox every Tuesday morning. You can do that by going to cottongrower.com forward slash subscribe. Also, be sure to follow Cotton Grower on social media. We are at Cotton Grower Mag on Twitter. And on Facebook, you'll find us by searching for Cotton Grower Magazine. Cotton Companion Podcast is produced twice monthly by Tyler Hatch and Kim Henderson, our talented colleagues at the World Headquarters for Meister Media Worldwide in lovely Willoughby, Ohio. I'm Jim Stedman, and Beck Barnes and I will be back with you in a few weeks with the next episode of the Cotton Companion. Until then, get those planters ready and stay safe. Farmer. Yeah, he works and he works and he works and he works all day. God made a farm.